Welcome to our first do-it-yourself home video. Today, we are going to build an enclosure to hide some of those unsightly things in a common backyard. Here's our first example. We've already completed this one. This is, as you can see, an enclosure to cover that air conditioner. Now, it may just be unsightly, but if you look down here and you see the fins, on the side of the air conditioner. Now this enclosure will help keep any big trash or any other large debris from hitting your air conditioner. It will also prevent a lot of that nastiness when horrible weather comes. So let's head on over here to Brad. He's at the other part of the yard where he's beginning our project of the day. Right now he's marking off his boards so that he can determine where his pickets will land exactly so that he can make his posts center where your pickets aren't uneven off each side. What he's done, he's taking one of the pickets that we'll use and he's turning it on its side and that's going to be the gap in between each one of the pickets that we place. While Brad stays busy measuring out the pickets, I'm going to go ahead and show you our current layout. We've determined, the, you got to love our little landmarks here, this flower here to that wall over there, that will be our one border, and then from said screwdriver, back to that flower will be our fence. Now, we didn't want to build a gate and we wanted to still give the homeowners easy access in to, you know, the pool pump and any plumbing that they might need to be able to get through. So what we've done is we've left a gap from here to the fence that we will leave open and able to just walk through. Now Brad's measuring things off now making sure that he knows exactly his exact measurements so that he can make sure his boards that he was measuring a second ago will lay perfectly. And now is to start digging our four base post holes. We'll be back in just a minute. Okay, right now we're working on getting the holes dug. Brad's kind of taking it a little slower just because of the fact that we have plumbing clearly exposed right where we need. In the hole I need to. And see, that's why we were taking it slow. Didn't just attack it with a shovel. Kind of went at it hands on just to make sure. Okay. After reevaluating our situation, we've decided that it's much more safer much more logical if we just go ahead and attach our board, our post, right here and go ahead and just mount it onto this solid concrete foundation of a building and that way we neither hinder the pool nor any kind of damage, any pipes or anything like that underground. Um, it's always safer to just think bigger to avoid a problem. We're going to go ahead and set our boards out so that we know where they'll line up so that we can grab our posts and position them in the perfect spot. A lot of these projects are just time consuming, a lot of thinking time, a lot of getting it right in your head before you attempt to do it, you know, as a project itself. And of course we are editing this to make it go a lot quicker than normal. Now, I'm not sure if Brad wants to have that completely flush with the building. Now, we've decided what we're going to do is we're going to go flush with this building right here. We're going to go with this edge so that our fence comes out and it's perfect. So it'll be a symmetrical line. Now, since we've decided to put our posts so far up against the building, we've decided, there again, to be safer than sorry 
and we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint our post first before we install it onto the building. In the meantime, Brad's going to get the holes dug and get it ready. Okay, now we've got a few of the holes dug. We've got the board primed. Now we're going to wait for that to paint. And while we wait for that to paint, we'll get a few other things done. Work never stops just because you're waiting on something. Now, we're going to go ahead and set a couple of posts. The measurements that we're going for, first off, we want our pickets to hang above the ground about an inch and a half. So for us, what we've done is we've picked 36 inch posts with 34 inch pickets. And what we're going to do is we'll get our posts set and we'll get them measured where they're standing out of the ground exactly three foot tall and we'll get back. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to explain a few things that were explained to me differently. Now normally when we build our enclosures, we're going to build them with huge posts. Not necessarily huge posts, but we'll go with a post, say, this size. Okay, this is a four by four by six. Okay. But since we're not able to dig next to that building, the only reason that we use a post that's four by four is because it's freestanding. It needs to withstand all the wind, all the put pressure. But since our foundation is going to be this big building, then this 2 by 4 will work great to hold our fence. Okay, now another little update that we want to go ahead and give you guys is since these are not made to be permanent type enclosures, um, we make these like we say to hinder big debris from getting in things, hide unsightly views. But the one thing that a homeowner always needs to have is a way to repair what they're trying to hide. These posts will not be cemented, concreted into these holes. These posts will just be set. They will be dug. They are, are, the holes are dug 12 inches. They will be buried one foot. But we do this so that if the homeowner needs to remove it because, say, this little pump thing, it, it starts to leak. They need to repair it. Those start to leak. They need to repair it. They need to get this fence out and they need to dig a hole. Then they can just dig out the fence and we can come back and we can reinstall it. We're getting the post ready now. As you can tell, Brad's already got a couple of them set in the holes. Not by any means ready to even probably be looked at yet, but hey. You know, with these bigger boards, he scores all four sides. And... Okay. Now we've got the other two posts. We're going to watch Brad place them just in the holes. See, he's just setting them. Just, they're in place now. And see, now we're going to make sure that our boards are going to go far enough across. This we know is not. No, that's right. That's why you make your hole a little bigger than your post so you can move it around. I didn't uh... Okay. Now we've got all of our poles put in our holes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach our 2x4 to the building. Now a key, key, key reminder 
if you remember only one thing about this video, remember this. When you go to apply something into a brick, you need to go, if you'll see he's measured, and you can tell he's measured out at all these grout lines here. And he's going to hit nothing but the grout lines so that the brick doesn't crack. Now he's starting to pre-drill the hole through the grout, correct? Through the mortar. Now he's not getting all the way into the mortar. He's just pretty much starting a hole where he needs to be. So that it's marked. All he's done, and you can barely see it. I'm sure this isn't even going to help you all at all. But if you look, you can see a tiny mark here, tiny mark here, and a tiny mark inside that deep grout line. Okay, and now we're going to attach our 2x4 to our building. Okay, our drill bit has been attached. Brad's lining up the nail, the screw, with his mark that he just kind of scarred the, the mortar with. Of course, the best things always happen after I've turned the camera off. And my husband has waited to show me something. And what he's done is, he's going to take, that is just wood. He, yeah, he just nailed that wood into that hole, broke it off, because screws tend to screw into wood just a lot better. It'll give it some grip instead of just having that cement. how easy this goes now that he's stuck those little wood pieces into the holes. Okay, now Brad, if you'll grab it with both hands, just give it a good yank, make sure it's not going to come off. See guys, there's our solid 2 by 4 <laughs> that's going to hold yeah, our fence. Okay, so we've dug our holes. We've got a few posts already solidified. And now we are trying to get the last two poles done. Um, one thing you need to think about is you need to measure off from where your first pole is. You can always have a level board, but it may kind of zigzag to an angle if you don't measure it. Oh my god!